are the stories from the road of an automotive diagnostic robot from the future to discover new problems and new vehicles and to go where no other robot has gone before. Robotech was called to a shop with a 2001 Dodge Dakota and a 4.7 liter engine that had erratic fuel trims with a rich operation. The shop also scanned the vehicle and obtained a series of O2 sensor codes. A basic tune-up was performed, including the spark plugs and wires. Then, the front O2 sensors were also replaced. But neither of these repairs corrected the problem. The codes were erased. The vehicle was driven and the same codes came back again. The tech did say that the valve cover gaskets were replaced due to an oil leak, which might have damaged the O2 sensors. I took that with a grain of salt. When I got to the shop, I immediately started my diagnosis plan by scanning the ECM. Sure enough, there were O2 sensor codes present and the perennial P0172 and P0175, or fuel system to rich. A rich condition is a bit more, rare than a lean one. More issues are related to lean conditions, not rich, but this was the opposite. So I started thinking what would drive the mixture rich, like a plug fuel regulator return, leaky injector, and excess fuel in the oil or even a blown head gasket. But, these were wide areas of concern, and I only had an hour for diagnostics time. I needed to sharpen my robotech strategy. What is the fastest way to determine mixture? It was either a 5 gas analyzer or using the O2 sensors. I decided to go with the oscilloscope and the O2 sensors, since the 5 gas took longer to set up. The O2 sensors were brand new, so I knew they were good. I proceeded to connect channel 1 of the scope to the O2 sensors signal wire. I did find something curious. It seemed that the valve cover gasket was leaking again, because I found the O2 sensor wires oil soaked. I checked for oil leaks at the valve covers, but found none. What was going on here? Could it be that the engine is building pressure inside? This would certainly make the oil force through the valve covers, but I saw no oil spill. Maybe BP came and wiped the engine every day. As soon as I scoped the O2 sensors, both of them, it became evident that they were pegged with close to 0.9 volts. This indicated a very rich condition. I sneaked down the converter to see if it was hot. I even took a reading using the infrared gun and found the converters to be at about 680 degrees Fahrenheit, which was fairly normal. This engine was not running rich. It seemed like it was because that's what the ECM inferred from the O2 sensors. Further visual examination revealed that the actual O2 sensor was also full of oil. An unknown fact is that all O2 sensors have a little hole where they take the air from outside. That's how they compare the exhaust to the O2 content in ambient there. This hole was clogged, so, I removed the O2 sensors and cleaned them, and blew some sharp air in them. I was hoping to get them back into action. And sure enough, they started working again. What a strange issue. This was all related to a valve cover oil leak gone wrong. I guess I needed to grab my smoke machine to at least tell the shop where the leak was. I left the car running and went to ready the smoke machine. My plan was to smoke test the engine for the leak, when suddenly something caught my eye. What on earth was that? The clean O2 sensors were back full of oil, and it wasn't from the valve covers. I inspected the O2 sensors for oil intrusion. The whole harness and shroud was drenched in oil, but I realized that it was an engine oil. It looked like transmission or power steering oil. I followed the O2 sensor harness and immediately saw what was happening. The issue was caused by a leaky power steering switch that literally pumped power steering fluid through the connector wiring shroud and engine harness back into the ECM and down into the O2 sensors. The only fix here was to replace the ECM and the entire engine harness. It was simply too costly to clean the harness. The harness. ECM and O2 sensors were replaced and the vehicle was never seen again. This case definitely topped the scale of strangeness, but in this trade, you live and learn. We often take for granted that the new part is trouble free, but in this case, the new part or the O2 sensor was being made to fail. This robot will now power down for a recharge. Will I dream? I don't know. 
See you next time.